Good afternoon. Hope you're doing well today. If you would grab your Bible, let's turn to Job, Job chapter 1. We're going to jump right into our study on the, the book of Job, the man Job. Job was a real man and uh, lived a long time ago. But uh, man, these truths that we find uh, in his life and as we go through the book, uh, finds, we find in the lives of his friends and that conversation back and forth. Uh, man, the, these are timeless, timeless things. So I think they'll be a help to us today. Job chapter 1, we're going to begin with a uh, great change in Job's life. Satan has just left the presence of the Lord. It says in verse number 12, it says, So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And uh, man, he is he is going to strike, and he's going to strike again and again and again. He's going to strike with uh, all his power. He's literally going to go up to the limit of what God set, the boundaries. And that's one of the things that uh, we need to remember is that Satan is a, is a bound creature. Uh, he is permitted only certain things, and he is hemmed in, hedged in, kept out or kept kept away uh, by the very power of God. So I'm I'm glad I'm I'm the Lord's child today. Let's pray, and then we'll get right into this. We're going to start in verse number 13. Father, I I thank you for my salvation. I thank you, Lord, for your love. I pray, dear God, that you would uh, challenge us, Lord, by this man's life. Thank you for. The strength that he uh, uh, had, the ability to, to persevere, and Lord, we know that it is uh, only through your strength and your your great power that you gave him. And Lord, I, I pray that we'd all be a Job, Lord, that we'd be a, a perfect man, one that uh, is upright in every way. And uh, Lord, be with our friends, Lord, be with our family, those that are sick, be with our friends and family that are traveling. Uh, give great grace to them, and we'll thank you for what you do in the name of Christ. Amen. Job uh, 1, verse number th uh, 13, it says, And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking in their eldest brother's house, and there came a messenger unto Job, and said the oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he is yet speaking there, came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking there, came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. Yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. I think it would be a good place to stop for just a moment. And uh, <clears throat> this is... Uh, a very difficult day. There was a day, it says, talking about where his sons and daughters had gathered. But there, uh, I think, no doubt, Job maybe even described it like this. There was a day, uh, man, where it fell apart. In just those uh, six or seven verses there, uh, Job is stripped of all that he has. Everything that belongs to him, everything that he owns, everything that is precious, everything that provides uh, income, everything that provides joy, gone. And, you know, there is a, a hair's breadth away from us losing it all. And uh, I don't think we ought to live in fear, but I think there ought to be something in us, obviously, that understands that uh, life is precious, it is fragile, um, that, uh, that what we have is uh, balanced on 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 an eye of uh just i mean it's just it's 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 just precarious life is and to think that things are going to go on as they they've gone on for year after year uh, things will change and uh, we're going to suffer loss and have trouble and so satan leaves the the uh, presence of the lord and 
man, he is he is on top of it. He is he is uh, delivering carnage in the life of Job. Uh, one after another, these servants that escaped. It says while they were yet speaking. Another one shows up, another servant to deliver bad news. I preached a message one time about these messengers. They, they're only known for the bad news they delivered. And that's really maybe the only message they had. But um, they're witnesses of something tremendously awful. And um, God deliver us from being a message of bad news that we would find some good news to deliver people. Let me read down the end of the chapter. I give, I'm going to give you just a little short outline and um, make some comments. It says in verse 20, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Whew. Wow, what a what a story! If they were making a movie, people would say, "I don't believe it." That's that that couldn't be true, uh, but it's true. This this is what this man went through. This is the difficulty that he faced. It, faced, and so I want you to see first the calamity, the calamity of that day. It was uh, first uh, there was uh, just the normal activities, uh, a festive time. In the house of his children, uh, life was going on. The, the, the oxen were, it was a business day. Uh, the asses were being fed. The sheep were uh, being tended. Uh, the camels uh, uh, were doing their work or, or being readied. And so the servants were about their normal day. And isn't it like that? There's so many times that on a normal day, things uh, fall apart. I, we just uh, got past uh, the 19th anniversary of 9-11, and that was a, just a very normal day. Uh, people got up, they went to work, they're living their life, and uh, almost 3,000 people, uh, their lives ended that day. Uh, firemen, police officers, Port Authority people, business people, secretaries, uh, uh, people that uh, waited tables, uh, the, uh, the restaurants that were uh, in that building, um, so uh, it uh, was going to be a normal day and it changed, it changed. So it was a calamity. This is the order of how it happened. Uh, first the oxen and the asses. And I want you to remember there's a place here where it talks about in some certain of these incidents where that it wasn't just the animals, but it says they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I have a feeling that probably some of those servants were also dear to Job and his family. And these were probably oftentimes more than, um, these were maybe the, the, the children of friends. These were, these were people that uh, they had worked with him or grown up even in his house. And so as the oxen, the ass, the servants, all gone. Next, it was the sheep, all the sheep gone uh, and the servants with them. And then um, you remember there were, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 5,000 oxen, 500 she-asses. And so we're talking about thousands uh, that are gone, taken, stolen, killed. Uh, the camels next uh, and the servants and then the children. Uh, and so this is what Satan did. He touched all that he had. Touched all that he had. He took, stripped it all away. He did it with various techniques. And so Sometimes we think that, um, uh, you know, once we get past something a certain way, that it won't happen again. It could happen again, and it may happen in a very different way. You may uh, uh, have a financial reversal. You may lose a job. Uh, your company may go out of business, uh, may, may change some other way. Um, and so uh, this is, this is, there is variety all through life. God chooses variety. And uh, so Satan uses these different techniques. He raises up certain people. He uses lightning. He uses the wind. And then, then this is the thing that I think is uh, incredibly, uh, I don't want know if I want to use the word frightening, but disturbing is the rap rapidity of it, uh, the rapidness, the, the, how quickly things were snatched away, how quickly it, it's, it's all lost, how 
boom, just one stroke after another, uh, boom, 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 just again, just blow after blow, just as if uh, a fighter in the ring, just uh, there's a pummeling that's taking place, a piling on uh, that is just disturbing, just boom, 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 boom. There's no let up. Uh, it's, it's right after another. And, you know, trials seldom come alone. I remember there was a year that my, my mom lost her mother, uh, her brother, and her sister all within nine months. And uh, it was a, a terribly uh, disturbing year. Uh, those, those just laid on top of each other. And, you know, one of those losses would be incredibly difficult to deal with. Uh, but to have those in such a tight time frame is, uh, is especially hard. And so imagine he, he's lost his livelihood. And I can only imagine that what he must have felt like, you know, always in the back of his mind, at least I have my children, at least my children are okay. And then this last one shows up and he begins to talk about his children in verse number 18, thy sons and thy daughters. And he thought, he thought oh no, 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 not this. Not this, this would be more that I can bear. And so as he begins to relate the story about all of his children, uh, the son, his sons, his daughters, all taken away, and so the calamity of that day, there was a day, there was a day, and uh, no doubt a day he maybe would talk about the rest of his life. There was a day, man, what a day. And although we know that uh, joy returns, there is a, a God gifting back uh, children, and it says children's children up to the fourth generation. He lived, uh, I think, another 140 years after this. Um, there's still the loss of these children, so that's very, very difficult. I want you to notice not only the calamity, but the cause, the cause. And you, you'd say verse number 15, the, the Sabians. Uh, you'd say the lightning. You'd, see, you'd say the Chaldeans. You'd say the wind. And in our mind, what we, would, what we ought to say, those are the secondary causes. And we see, we see the cause behind everything, the cause that God allowed these things. God is the great cause, the cause. God is the cause. He is, everything else is secondary. Where is God in this? Where is God's hand? What has God allowed? God, is, God did not maybe cause this, but God allowed it to happen. It passed through his fingers. If, if trouble touches you, know this, there's, there's a cause in God that's allowed this to happen in your life. God's, God's aware. Uh, I mentioned this the other night, dealing with the, the home and the tragedy, trouble at home. God is aware. God is involved. God, God wasn't caught off guard. God is, God is able in all those things to help. And uh, I think probably one of the great examples of this is to look past the secondary causes is in Jonah. Now you may want to turn there. And you know the story of Jonah. Everybody's familiar with that. Jonah He's uh, running from God. He's a preacher that's supposed to deliver a message, and he turns his back on them. He tries to flee. He gets on the ship. He's going farther away, directly opposite from where he should go. And um, the, the sailors begin to deal with him. They, the, the lot falls upon him. They say, what have you done to us? And uh, it says in verse number 15, chapter 1, it says, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. So those sailors picked him up. Those sailors in that storm literally threw, they literally threw Jonah overboard. And so Jonah could easily have said, hey, the sailors threw me overboard. But later when he's praying, he's in the belly of the great fish, fish's belly. It says in verse number, um, let's start in verse number two. It says, and, he, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I. And thou heardest my voice. Now listen to this very carefully. Verse 3. For thou hast cast me into the deep. Well, who cast him into the water? The sailors. But who, who, who caused it? Who, who was the, not the secondary cause, not the, the mechanism that was used, but who was the cause? It was God that cast him into the water. And Jonah recognizes that. He said, I recognize the hand of God in my life. And I think, I think you, you would understand that uh, that's what, that's what uh, uh, Job is saying here. When he says this, he says, listen to his prayer. 
He says, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. He says, I recognize the cause here. I see God's hand at work. The Lord gave it. I, I, I had nothing when I came in. I'm going to have nothing when I go out. God gave, God take, took it away. I recognize the cause of God here. And that's easy to recognize, I think. I think that's maybe the e easier part of this. You're living through the calamity. You recognize, hey, God's at work here. This is the challenge. This is the challenge. It says, blessed, he says, Job says, blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job didn't sin. In all this, he did not charge God foolishly. He didn't, he didn't recklessly throw God's name into the mud. He continued to bless, to bless the Lord even in his pain. That's going to get worse. He's going to, we're going to look at this next week. Uh, he's going to get sick. He's going to have body pain. And I'll tell you that, that and I understand the, the loss of the children was, was tragic, but now it's going to get so close, so close to him uh, to deal with this chronic situation of his body hurting. And so he didn't charge God foolishly. Uh, he continues to lift up his name. Um, read just a little story about uh, a minister was preaching about a tradesman and how when he'd collect a coin from uh, his customer, he'd take the coin and he would slam it, slam it down on the, on the work table, the workbench, to test it, to see if it rang true. Did it sound right? Did it ring true? And I'm telling you that Job rang true in the test of whether he was real or not. Let me give you a, a, a verse here, Job 13, verse 15. I'll get there. <clears throat> I'm still turning here. should have had it marked. Job 13, verse 15. He says this, Job says this, in the middle of all of his trouble, he says, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Mm, that's pretty good. If there's somebody that maybe could have foolishly charged the Lord, it would have been Job, but he didn't. He didn't. Uh, he had calamity, and I've, I've seen uh, nothing compared to this, obviously. But I've seen some t tough days. I have, personally. And I'm not, I'm not the hero of every story, but I've seen some things. And... Um, Maybe not in the moment, but over the course of my life, I see the hand of God in these things, the difficulties. Maybe for another day, I probably have told a story, maybe about Death Hill and uh, the terrible day that we had on Death Hill. Uh, no one lost their life. They, I guess they could have. And uh, it's a place of great pain, but it is also a place looking back now. Uh, we kind of like we can laugh about it. You know, we could laugh about it. I don't think I don't know that Job ever gets to a place he could laugh about this day, obviously, but I think joy can is going to return to his life. And so the calamity, the cause, and the challenge, the challenge. See God, see God's hand. Don't speak foolishly about the Lord, about his love for you. Don't don't do that. Don't 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 you call into into, into scrutiny God's wisdom. He's wise beyond us. And so um, troubles are going to come. They're going to come in packages. They're going to come in packs of multiples. And they're going to come suddenly. I mean, just boom, 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 boom at times. Will you ring true? There's not going to be enough time at that day to, to get prepared. You've got to get prepared now. Now. Now is the time. Get ready now. Put away the Word of God in your heart. Strengthen yourself. Uh, pray. Pray. Be around God's people. Be in the house of God. And uh, where, I'd say where it's available now. Um, be around God's people. And uh, give, give, give to the work of the Lord. Go, speak, be a witness, all these things. And uh, it'll prepare you for the day. There was a day. There was a day. Well, God bless you. We'll see you next time, okay?